Hey folks, Matt from IreTheImage.com. I've got a viewer question in from Ryan. This is Ryan writing it on the email. He says, hello, I have scoured the net and YouTube for reliable DSLR advice and you seem to be one of the few out there that offer non-biased, useful advice. And you are polite, which seems to be a rare quality among experts. Well, thank you very much. It is annoying how so many people online um, talk to people that the way they would never speak to people in person. So, uh, But I appreciate you pointing that out. I try. Uh, I started with a Nikon D3200, then went to a 5300, and now I'm looking at the 7500. However, the low light performance bothers me. I was looking on DxO Mark, and the low light ISO rating there for the 7500 is only about 150 points higher than what I already have. However, the D750 performance seems to be more than double. I'm guessing this is due to the full frame sensor versus the APS-C. Anyways, they are similar in price when it all comes down to it. Seems you seem to have great ex- uh, since you seem to have great experience with these two devices, would you be able to recommend one over the other for no flash photography and low light performance? The only thing that bothered me about the Z750 was that it is almost four years old. I was holding off on buying something that expensive that is that old. Any advice is appreciated. Thank you. Well, thanks for your question, Ryan. Appreciate that. And um, I guess right away I'd say you know you're looking at no flash photography low light performance I wouldn't even worry at all that the 750 is four or four years old it's an amazing camera it's still one of the top rented cameras uh we just saw that in lens rentals results still a good seller because it's amazing it's an awesome camera it's uh, you know it's kind of like an old one of the older f100 film cameras which were so popular and so great uh it's got a fantastic autofocus system very good performing in low light uh and if you're doing no flash low light photography i think that's a great way to go without going into the full size bodies with the built-in grip such as a d5 um so yeah i would i wouldn't worry at all that it's four years old if anything it's an advantage to you because you're gonna be able to get it at a better price you should be able to find it used or refurbed uh, at a very good price you could even get it on sale for a great price so as far as the 7500 i don't think uh we've talked about this before here on the channel and we've seen other people's results and we've seen the same type of thing with the d500 is the DxO Mark scores there uh, may not really, in real world shooting terms, accurately reflect how good both those cameras, the 500 and the D7500, are at uh, low light shooting. I think, in real world terms, they're probably much closer to the performance of the D750. I know some people have even argued the D500 outperforms, uh, and the 7500 is essentially the same sensor, so take that uh, as you will. Uh, but I wouldn't. If the 750 really interested you, um, maybe go into the store, get your hands on it, take a card with you, see if you can shoot some low-light photos, and then go home and analyze them and have a look. Do some more creeping online, looking at uh, samples people have shot of top and top ISO from those cameras. I'm actually going to get a 500 in shortly. Um, I was uh, I was really sick and then had hernia surgery recently. So when Nikon was going to loan me one, I declined because I wasn't. Gonna, I knew I wasn't going to be up and on my feet for a while. So I didn't get it in, but I'm going to be getting it in soon. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't worry as much. If those cameras really interest you and you'd rather stay APS-C or DX in this case, um, which is Nikon's nomenclature for APS-C, I wouldn't rule them out just because of high ISO because I think they're much closer to, some people would argue even, I think, you know, that they're maybe superior to. I'm not sure I buy superior. They're both really good cameras, I guess, is what we're getting down to. I really like the 750 because you're getting right into full frame and it has some advantages and there's some, you know, shallower depth of field and, and it is, I think, it's a top performing low light camera. So, um, so that said, I'm going to throw it back to the audience as I always do. What would you guys do in this situation? Do you think a 500 or a 7500 would be a better option? Or would you go with the 750? Um, you know, as you can see, my preference is probably the 750 in this situation, although I don't think you'd have any trouble shooting the 7500. Uh, but let us know what you guys would do and why. Which way would you go and why? Let's help out Ryan. Thanks for your question, Ryan. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at artoftheimage.com.